Hey friends, Alvin here. Welcome to our November monthly Zoom meeting. And so this time we're going to be looking at missions. What exactly does it look like during COVID, post-COVID, and everything in between? And I am excited to have, uh, we have two people today. We've got Adrian Gardner, who is the Director of Canadian Partnerships from CBM, as well with Louise Hammond, uh, who is the, I believe, Coordinator of Scent and Youth Engagement. Um, she can correct me later if I'm wrong. So uh, we are welcome to have them here. We're excited to have you here. And so, yeah, Adrian, um, take it away. Yeah, thanks, Alvin. Uh, thanks for this invitation to uh, share a bit with you uh, this evening on the topic of uh, God's global mission and uh, what that looks like uh, during and uh, we trust after uh, we move through this season of COVID. Um, but I'm going to actually start just by um, talking about life before COVID um, and what, uh, what our mission strategy looks like and who we are and just a little bit about uh, CBM in general. Uh, CBM, as uh, probably a lot of people watching will know, uh, is the global mission agency of the Canadian Baptist Churches. So that includes CBOQ and uh, our friends uh, in French Baptist Union and Atlantic Canada and also uh, out west as well. It's about a thousand churches approximately who have uh, decided to cooperate together um, to seek to bring hope and healing uh, to a broken world um, and proclaim and demonstrate the good news of Jesus. I say a lot that everything we do at CBM is about equipping local churches uh, to live out the gospel in word and deed. That could be in Canada, that could be in Rwanda, that could be in El Salvador. Um, we exist to equip local churches uh, to live out the gospel in word and deed. We do that in uh, five main areas. We do it uh, what we call causes. Uh, the first is building the church. We believe that um, without the word of God, we have nothing to offer to this world. So in, uh, we work to build the church through evangelism, church planting, theological education, uh, coming alongside uh, local congregations and pastors and training leaders. Uh, we seek to address poverty and care for those affected by poverty uh, because the word needs to be lived out in action as well and demonstrated. Uh, we seek to promote justice. Uh, it's the third cause. Uh, so it's not just um, addressing poverty, but also working to um, right the wrongs that are causing this uh, wrong situation. So how do we work to promote justice. We also uh, talk about kids at risk. We, I think as Canadian Baptists have a special place in our heart for children and uh, want to see God's care and compassion and um, love for them. So kids at risk, poverty, justice, building the church. And then the fifth cause we talk about is one that usually gets a little less airtime. Uh, something we do when we need to respond is called crisis response. Um, well, 2020 is the year that the fifth cause has become the first. Um, we've had to really shift a lot of our, our programming, a lot of our strategy to address the COVID pandemic um, and the effects of lockdowns. I mean, people in the countries where we work are part of the informal economy where if you don't work, you don't get paid. There's no safety nets, and we've just seen devastating effects in some countries that have lost tourism dollars, others just from the lockdown. Uh, we've been able to respond there, and then more recently with um, the explosion in Beirut as well. So that's who we are. Um, we seek to express the mission heart of the Canadian Baptist Church, um, equipping local churches to live out the gospel and word and deed. And one of the ways, one of the areas that we're passionate about is helping engage youth. We want to engage the next generation, children and youth, in God's global mission, um, in partnership, but also sometimes uh, by physically going and being in relationship with uh, the global church to serve uh, in meaningful ways, but also to learn. Um, one of the messages that we repeat over and over again is that we have much to learn from our friends in the global south. Um, and the church has much to teach us here in Canada. So we, we seek to help people go. What we used to call short-term mission trips, we uh, have gotten rid of that term. Um, I 
and famous in the office for saying there's no such thing as short-term mission. We're on mission every day of our lives, which is why in Louise's title, you heard uh, she's the coordinator for SENT. SENT is what we used to call short-term mission. And it's more than just a name change. It was a really um, intentional shift to make our language line up with what we believed, which is that we are all SENT people. The invitation is to be sent cross-culturally for a season and then be sent back to live differently. Uh, and rooting the trip really is part of discipleship and learning um, and partnership with um, the church in, in the majority world. We were on track this year and was on track to have the largest number of volunteers ever. I mean, a team from CBOQ was going to be going to the Dominican Republic. We had youth teams going to Cuba, to El Salvador, uh, to Costa Rica, um, to Rwanda. There was a camp team. And, uh, we trust that God still will be working in those students' lives, but COVID has derailed. Uh, much of our plans for that in-person experience as we've had to, you know, uh, adapt because global travel is just not safe or reasonable. But that does not mean that engaging students, engaging the church, or um, it doesn't mean it stopped, and it doesn't mean that God's global mission is on pause in terms of the Canadian church partnering with the majority world. Um, so Louise, why don't you take it from here and share a little bit about um, how we continue to be engaged in global mission during this season. Sure. Uh, yeah, thanks, Alvin. Thanks for having us this evening. Um, I need to get my, my title right. I work in the area of scent and in youth engagement. So this is, um, this is yeah, just an honor to, uh, to be a part of this tonight. So I do want to talk for just a couple minutes about uh, what global mission engagement might look like during this COVID-19 pandemic. We're all, of course, waiting for it to be over and would love for it to be over yesterday, uh, but we're, we're in this season for sure. And, um, and I wanna share with you some thoughts about that and start with showing a photo. Alvin's got uh, just one, one slide to share with you if our technology to have your reaction to that. In global missions, what, what might be our response to that? Uh, and we don't have time to, to all share that this evening, but my guess is that your reaction might be um, a desire to help. Um, and that would be a really good reaction. Uh, I think Jesus would approve of, of that desire uh, to want to help. We know that uh, there's obviously needs that we can dream about what the practical needs might be just looking at a simple photo like that um, and, and certainly we can help. But I wonder um, after we've helped, after we've dealt with some of the practical things that we might be able to do to help in this community and I can assure you actually that at CBM we did, we did help uh, in this community during this flood situation. But I wonder after the helping um, how many of us might think But this is a church that we have a lot to learn from. During this time of the COVID-19 pandemic, typically taught about missions. Um, this is a, in some ways a, a new or a different way of, of thinking about how we engage globally, a more holistic way of understanding mission or integral mission as as we call this type of thinking. But I wanna suggest that learning from our global partners, the, the church around the world, is one of the best ways that we can engage in mission right now. And here's why. It's because we're in global crisis, which we all know. Um, and I don't wanna pretend that I, I know all of the churches in the CBOQ really well, so forgive me uh, if I'm oversimplifying, but I guess that for most of us, this is the most significant crisis uh, that we as church leaders have dealt with. But for most churches that we at CBM partner with globally, this is not their first crisis by any stretch. So many of our global partners have dealt with and often thrived through a war, famine, natural disasters, political unrest, et cetera, et cetera, the list goes on. And we truly have so much to learn from our partners right now. 
Um, I was speaking with Ali Haddad. He is the uh, president at the Arab Baptist Theological Seminary in Beirut, Lebanon. Um, and Ali is just, just a wise, really brilliant man with um, just so, so much wisdom. And when we were chatting, he commented just off the cuff that the COVID-19 pandemic is not even in the top three crisis that they are dealing with in Lebanon, not even in the top three. Uh, they have experience and so much knowledge around living faithfully of the gospel in times of suffering and crisis. They know how to mobilize. They know how to care for people. They know how to pray in ways that perhaps we don't yet. Uh, and I think we have so much to learn right now, if we're humble enough uh, to ask for help and to say, we don't really know a lot about this. We don't really know how to, how to pivot in a crisis. Uh, we don't even know often a, a good theology of suffering. Uh, we're having a hard time understanding what to do and how we, how we function in these times. So I think we have a lot to learn. Um, our partners in India, that photo that, that Alvin showed you, um, they've actually planted six churches and they've had over 120 baptisms. We have a lot to learn. Uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic, especially at the height of it in the spring and leading into the summer, they provided food aid for 116 households, not because they have uh, all kinds of material resources to do that in any way but because they knew how to mobilize uh, and they were able to draw on other resources, including CBM, uh, to help and to not let uh, resources get in the way of, of caring for the most vulnerable. So I could talk about that forever, but I think that's number one, how to engage in missions during uh, COVID-19 is to learn. And one of the beauties of CBM is that we have those connections. Uh, as pastors, you don't have to go out and try and find a church globally to learn from. Uh, we have all kinds of connections through our field staff and our partners around the world where, um, where I'm sure they would be thrilled uh, and honored truly to be able to encourage you and to share uh, their wisdom and their in insight. Uh, secondly, and these are just, these are just some ideas, um, but second I was thinking, you know, there is a tremendous amount of support that is needed right now at CBM. Uh, we mostly do, uh, Adrian talked about our, our causes, um, and most of the work that we do with our partners would be considered more development work. Uh, but during COVID-19, we've been doing a lot of relief work, which is, um, you know, just caring for the people that are most vulnerable right now, feeding hungry bellies, um, you know, not looking at the, the systemic causes of why they're hungry, but just feeding people um, so that we're, we're caring for those immediate needs. Uh, so we have a COVID-19 emergency response fund, and we've dispersed well over $300,000 in funds to help the most vulnerable in this crisis. So engaging in global mission uh, by sending needed funds is, um, is, is really needed right now. Um, and as youth pastors, this is a good way to engage your youth by having them learn about the impact of COVID-19 globally. Something that they're experiencing that they, um, they're already engaged with because they're living in this reality every day. And so to know that all around the world, we are all dealing with this pandemic. Um, and I think it would be pretty eye-opening and engaging for them to talk about what this might look like globally. A lot of the youth may not know that this health crisis um, has become a food crisis in many of the countries around the world, um, and they likely haven't thought about um, how a pandemic might affect the poor and the most vulnerable. And there are other ways to engage in missions. Um, another thought is, is caring for missionaries, or as we call them at CBM field staff, uh, caring for those who've gone cross-culturally and have had to come home. And um, there's a real uh, grieving process there and a sense of culture shock. Uh, and also caring for those who haven't been able to go. Um, I heard a stat recently that 1.6 million uh, US and Canadian citizens go on a short-term mission trip each year. 1.6 million. That's a lot of people not going on a short-term mission trip or as we call them a scent experience. Uh, this year. And so to be able to walk alongside those people and uh, to help them grieve uh, sort of that, uh, that that dream or that desired experience that they wanted um, or you know some real substantial serving that they were hoping to do in some places uh, for the church to come alongside uh, those people and really care for them during this time I think is a profound way to engage in missions. 
I'm also praying, of course, uh, we can't stress that enough, but teaching youth uh, to pray for the world in, uh, in a really profound way, engaging with something that they're experiencing as well. Um, and also learning, not just as I mentioned from specifically from our churches who are in crisis and no crisis, um, but learning more about mission in general. Um, maybe taking some time to think about, you know, as a youth ministry, what, what is our theology of mission? As a church, what is it that we believe about mission? Um, and not, um, but some of the specifics of, of, you know, do we need to go cross-culturally? When should we go? How might we uh, work some of that out? How will we go if we go? Uh, when we come back, uh, how will that change things in our congregation? All of those big questions around mission and what it really is uh, that you believe as a church. It might be uh, a good time in the season where we can't travel uh, to talk through some of those questions. Uh, about um, global mission engagement post COVID-19 as we, as we trust that it will be post uh, this pandemic. Yeah, it's good, it's a good timing, Louise, as um, there was an announcement made today as we're recording uh, about potentially a vaccine candidate getting some positive results. So very early, who knows, but we are looking forward to a time when um, uh, this pandemic is in the past. Uh, and we are planning for what that looks like. Uh, I think the first thing I'd say on this note is that uh, some of the things that we've learned as an organization during COVID are going to continue. Um, we've had to be incredibly more creative in how we connect uh, Canadian youth and adults, but we're talking youth tonight, with our global partners um, through uh, the internet, through things like virtual um, gatherings. I know uh, some churches and youth groups have had uh, Zoom calls with field staff or with partner partner churches. They've had, um, as Louise had mentioned, times to, to pray for uh, global issues, and as part of that, they've connected uh, through th through through the internet um, with with people in the field. Um, we've done um, started out daily, then it went biweekly. Now it's uh, pretty much a weekly. Uh, broadcast similar to this this one that you're doing, uh, CBUK Youth, just to try to keep information, keep people feeling connected to what's going on. Um, those things that we've uh, learned and have sought to do, I think, will continue. There, there will will be continued ways for youth groups to virtually partner with the church, uh, with our partner churches. At the same time, we are looking forward to when youth groups can travel again. I think. Uh, Louise and I both have backgrounds in youth ministry, both have served as youth pastors, uh, both have traveled as youth uh, uh, and as and adults on these cross-cultural trips. And I think both of us would say that they were instrumental and formational in our discipleship and our understanding of the character of God, uh, his mission, his church, and the life that we're called to live. So I've seen that in my ministry. I've, see, I've experienced it personally. And I believe that going physically to sit with, to learn from, um, is it's irreplaceable. Um, and we look forward to when that can happen again. Uh, we have three criteria that we are sort of measuring that decision by. The first is the lifting of the government's avoid all travel, um, taking direction from the experts who are in leadership in our country and trusting uh, them on their travel advisory. So that needs to be lifted. Uh, the second thing is there needs to be, from a very practical uh, standpoint, there needs to be a means to obtain insurance. Um, and that actually is now in place in most countries. Uh, and then the third thing is very um, personal. The other, those two are external. The third is very internal to CBM. And that is we will be evaluating um, suitability for, for a travel on a country by country basis according uh, to our own risk management procedure. Um, I'm optimistically hoping for um, late summer 2021. Um, fall might be more reasonable or even early 2022, um, especially for youth teams because they need time. The issue isn't even the travel. They need time to prepare to go 
get the team in place, fundraise, do all of the team building and discipleship training uh, before you go. So for a youth team, it's probably, we're talking 2022. Um, if there was someone that could, if the, you know, the world changed enough that they could travel, they could just, maybe that's a little bit earlier, but um, yeah, I guess the, the bottom line is when it's safe to travel, I mean, it, it will never be safe to travel. The, that's something that I have drilled in my lots of parents' meetings. There's always risk. But when the risk is an acceptable level um, and we can minimize it, then we look forward to taking youth um, and students on life-changing experiences as they um, experience God in this cross-cultural setting with some of the most incredible leaders. Um, yeah, I think of my time in Bolivia. I think of teams I've led uh, to Kenya. It's, I look forward to when that can happen again. I look forward to my daughter going on a trip like that um, when, when it works. I had the chance to travel with my son uh, to Kenya and I look forward to Grace getting to go as well. Anyway, post COVID, who knows? Who knows when and who knows exactly what, but we know that a lot of the lessons that we've learned in this season will continue and virtual connection, I guess, being top of the top of the pile for that. But we do look forward to personal uh, interaction with our partners and again and students being involved that way. Louise, back to you. Yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited to think about you know, not just when we can travel again, because I can't wait to travel again and uh, and take uh, groups of youth on those trips. But um, I just think of imagining those conversations where we sit around and we talk about our shared experience in a global pandemic. You know, I've sat around in, in, in El Salvador, for example, and heard stories of, um, you know, people who've lived through the Civil War and what that was like. And, you know, just sitting there with my jaw on the floor thinking, you know, I, I can't even imagine experiencing something like this and just listening so deeply and learning. But imagine being able to share, um, to sh yeah, to share in this, this experience, something that we've all gone through together in vastly different ways, depending on where you are in the world. But um, to be able to talk through that, I think that will be really healing for uh, for so many of us. So I'm, yeah, looking forward to that for sure. Uh, anyway, as we wrap up, um, really, really briefly, um, Alvin asked us to to comment on some resources that we might have to share with you. And uh, at CBM, a lot of what we do is is resourcing the church. And so um, so we've got resources. Uh, a few that come to mind that might be helpful are, I, I mentioned about uh, working out your theology of mission. We have a resource uh, called Word Deed, uh, the Integral Mission Primer. It's a short, a short book that will help you uh, start discussions about um, integral mission and what that, what that looks like and helping you think through that and discuss that. That's, um, that would be a resource actually for certainly high school students or bits of it could be used for sure with middle school students if, um, if you were to pick and choose and start discussion uh, from that resource, that, that could be quite helpful. Uh, we have a game that's a lot of fun. It's called uh, The Wealth of Nations. Uh, I've played this many times with different youth groups and uh, it gets intense, let me tell you, but it's a lot of fun just to look at uh, the inequality around the world, the inequity and um, really great place to start discussion and that can be really played with any age group. Uh, for kids, I know uh, a lot of you likely have uh, children, uh, children and family ministries in your portfolio as well. And so we have a curriculum called Kids Care, and we've been writing that curriculum for years. And so we have uh, lots of kids care material available for you. Um, we've also adapted a lot of that for, uh, for our camps. We have uh, camps here on the East Coast where I live, and so we have resources for, for camps and youth ministries uh, as well along the lines of our kids care themes. We also have justice resources and uh, all kinds of other things we can recommend to you. Uh, and lots of things for churches in general, especially uh, Christmas time, we're in the thick of gift catalogs and websites for uh, churches to raise money for their campaigns and Advent resources, and the list goes on and on. Um, but I'm often thinking about how, when I was a youth pastor anyway, um, I wanted to have something that I could just download and go. That was my goal. Like what's a plug and play resource 
Um, no one has extra time to sit around and, you know, comb through curriculum and write their own stuff. Um, yeah, we're just looking for stuff that's easy that we can, we can go with, if, if I think we're honest a lot of the time. Um, but I'm always convicted that uh, many youth today, they are much more into uploading than they are into downloading, uh, meaning that they want to be a part of the conversation. They want to speak into the discussion rather than always being told or taught. And there's certainly a place for, for teaching, don't get me wrong. Um, but our youth today are more aware of global issues than any other generation has been before them. Um, so I, I want you to keep that in mind as you engage with them to think about um, how can they be a part of the discussion. They want to upload stuff. They want to speak into it. They want to have a voice. They want to uh, be able to dream and, and discuss uh, the issues of today. Um, so Adrian and I as well are a resource to you and all of us at CBM. Uh, please reach out to us if we can if we can help you in any way. So Alvin, back to you. Well, thank you, Louise and Adrian, uh, for your insights, uh, for the different ways that, that CBM is, is available to, to help our churches to better understand just where exactly is God taking, uh, not just the, the influence within our neighborhoods, but also beyond. And so, uh, but not just that, but also helping us to, to be connection points um, towards different stories that maybe we haven't paid attention to before. And so, we are grateful. And for those of you who are interested in reaching out to them, uh, their contact information will be available in the, in the YouTube description below. So feel free to reach out to them later on that. Uh, next December, uh, we are actually going to spend some time in prayer together, uh, praying from this past year of 2020, whatever that might have mean, whatever that still means in the next coming weeks, uh, heading towards there. Um, but we're going to take some time to, to pray as the year is about to finish and to see what God might be taking us towards. So we, uh, we hope that you will join us on that day, the second Monday of December. And so for all that, um, thank you very much and blessings to you.